Uh, let's go to the Cowboys preseason game. So the Rams defeat the Cowboys 13-12. to The score really doesn't matter, even though, I mean, Stetson Bennett scored that touchdown with on fourth and goal with four seconds left, right? After he How about that throw, though? After a series of bad ones by that quarterback by the Rams, that was as funky, a little sidearm, I don't know what you call it, but... It was a hell of a throw to win a ball game. Yeah, I mean, and obviously the Rams played their third string quarterback. No Matt Stafford, no Jimmy Garoppolo. So you're, it is for what it is. But look, the good, the bad, the ugly when it comes to the Cowboys. For me, I thought the good was there was a lot of good in the game, even though it wasn't the most clean game in the world. Demarvion overshone Maz, Mozzie Smith showed me something yesterday, though. And we've been talking about Demarvion since last year, and we thought he was going to be play, play a significant role last year, and then he tore his ACL, and now he's back with a vengeance. He had that tackle for a loss in the first quarter. He was flying all over the field. Number 13 is all over. Love that guy. It got a great motor, proven it. I think Cowboy fans should be encouraged by the Zimmer addition because they got four interceptions, which means the guys are put in the right place. Uh, and I think um, uh, Bell – had one of those interceptions. Mm -hmm. He also had nine tackles. I think he played well. Um, and the is it proper the receiver? Yeah, Cropper. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I think he he was as good as anybody on the offense, which wasn't great. I was very. I want to be impressed by Trey Lance because I'm in that. Ta we're we're going to get to Trey. In a I'm in that camp that you know maybe they should move on from Dak. I don't know about that now. We, yeah, we can talk about Trey in a second. Uh, Chuck, what'd you like? What was the good for you yesterday? I thought 88 for the Rams was pretty damn good. Jordan Whittington, he was all over the field. Yeah, seven catches, sixty something yards. I mean, he elite hair too. He does, no question. <laughs> Quero Gobbler. You know, I think the fascinating Gobbler. thing about him was, you know, why did he go so late in the draft? Because, I mean, he moves different than most guys, and I guess it's a matter just for him staying healthy, but. You know, I'm still trying to get a read on what I kind of value in terms of watching what Trey Lance did in the game the other day, yesterday. 25 of 41, right, or something like yep. that, throwing it. Like, that's not horrible. He didn't turn it over, so that's a positive. But there's still too much of dot, 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 instead of dot, 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 dot. You know, he... He just takes off. a long time to be able to make a decision with where to go with the football, which was some of the things I think we noticed during OTAs and minicamp. So I think it's a process, right? And we got to have some grace, probably the most football the guy's played in a year. So there were some moments that he had where he looked okay. There were some other moments where you're going, okay, this is still very much a work in progress. And I think for Cowboy fans, this is also – you know, hopefully your epiphany that the guy that you got back there is pretty damn good. Yeah. As and insignificant. You don't want Ford to have anything happen to him. As insignificant as the score is in a preseason game, the Cowboys should have won this game because Trey, yeah. Lan Trey Lance overthrew three touchdowns. And it, it's just his timing, to your point, looks awful. He looks lost sometimes with what his reads are. Is it A to B to C or where's my A actually at? If his A is closed, then he goes to D instead of to B and C. Like his reads are off. To McCarthy's point, which we'll hear in a second, they're trying to teach him almost from scratch is what it sounds like. They're trying to teach him, this is the footwork we need you to do. These are the mechanics we need you to have. And a year in, it doesn't look like he's exactly where he where they want him to be. So for me, my bad, for the good, the bad, the ugly, is Trey Lance. I didn't. I was not, not impressed like he, with him. It's not like he's a rookie, too. He's been in the league right. a while. Yeah, this is his fourth year I in the league. I think this goes yeah. back to, you know, he played a limited number of games in college the kid hasn't played a lot of football, but he shows you flashes. You know, things break down. You know, he had maybe some guys open. He didn't get rid of the ball and try to find a receiver, but he, he still has the ability. He's got some scat in him. He's able to take I mean, off and run with the football. I that's really good for a running almost back. Almost 50 yards. Correct. But, I mean, <laughs> you know he kept I mean? some drives alive. Again, it's, it's one preseason game, and yeah. everything that you're saying, I'm not saying I disagree with you. Yeah. But I feel like – there was at least some progress made yesterday with what I saw. Bob, for one second, let's get to uh, Coach Mike McCarthy. This is uh, uh, responding to a question from Todd Archer asking about the um, overthrows from Trey Lance. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I think it's, these are things that we need to work on. Um, and, and frankly, I probably, you know, went more drop back than I may normally in, you know, in that type of game. So, um, but yeah, I'm, 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 I'm trying to get, as much uh, as I can with him, you know, it's, 
well, you know, we want to see him run run the offense and at a high level. And yeah, but it, you know, the the footwork and and some of the things we're asking him to do conceptually, they're, they're new. So and uh, we, we just need we need work. We just need as much time as we can. And I, I know I said it every time I talk about him, but he's making good progress. You know, he's definitely wired the right way. He's great. He's a great athlete. We just we just have a lot of work to do. Definitely have a lot of work to do. I mean. Like I said, I, I, I personally am of the belief that Trey Lance will never be an, a starting NFL quarterback. I don't know if I've seen enough to make him an, a top 16 backup quarterback, though, to this point. Like, we just haven't seen enough from him, enough good from him to warrant any talk that he can take over as a starting quarterback for somebody. That's fair. The Niners saw enough of him to pick him, what, fifth overall? Yeah, and it might go down as one of the worst draft picks, worst draft day trades of all time. Could be. I mean... Immediately, and Kyle Shanahan has said this on the record. Like immediately, when they all got into camp, he went over to to John Lynch and was like, "Our third best, our third guy might be our best quarterback." Talking about talking uh, about Brock, uh, Purdy. Brock Purdy. Purdy, and that's with and that's Pundy. with <laughs> Pundy, <laughs> Pundy, yes. and that's with Trey Lance there, and I think that was with yeah. Jimmy G there as well. Like, yeah, he knew right away that Trey Lance did not have it, right? And yet the Cowboys give up a fourth round pick for him. And now they're probably going to be without him after after this season, unless they give him pennies on the dollar. Which I mean, if you want to keep him for pennies on the dollar after the season, then go right ahead. But uh, another th- good thing I th- I saw uh, Tyler Guyton obviously came in, and this my good goes along with the ugly, w- which was the injury to Chuma Yudoga. Uh, obviously, you don't want to see injuries in the game. Don't know if Chuma Yudoga is going to be injured for a while. Have the severity of that injury yet, really? But. Tyler Guyton filling in at left tackle. I think they found their left tackle of the future. I really do. He's a big, strong man, and if he he's can, been dominating Parsons in camp. Yeah, I mean he's been extremely impressive, and I think he didn't start because he was coming off that virus from last week. He sat out a couple of days of practice. He was sick, but get that guy. Barring health, he's going to be a really good left tackle. Likable kid too. Zach set him down. That was fun. Texas kid loves Manu Ginobili. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, everything that the reports are, and you know, when you have a guy like Tyler Smith saying he's further along than I was, and we all know how far along Tyler Smith was when he stepped on the playing field. So, I mean, it looks like they hit a home run with that one for sure. Yeah, I don't want to dis- – and I don't want to disparage like preseason games because I saw Cooper Beebe's uh, family, all those tweets yesterday about their mom's mom and dad in the jersey and tweeting out when their son gets into the game, like the, the family aspect of – of all of these kids finally getting to suit up in a cowboy uniform for the first time under the big lights, and it, it was, that was awesome. But like, I, I don't know how good Cooper's going to be a center. Brock Hoffman played pretty well. Um, the this, the offensive line is going to be a huge, huge question mark this entire season. They have a series of them, right? There's a lot of boxes that are going to need answers one way or the other. And you know, I think we talked about this a couple weeks ago. The Texans, were, I think, were in a similar boat last year with a ton of question marks, and they checked almost every one of them off as the season went along. And I don't know. It'll be fascinating to see because I have a feeling we're not going to see a lot of what the Cowboys are until week one. Yeah. True. And I think this season might be the most – might come down to health because if you lose Chumi, Chumi Doga and you put Tyler Guyton in there, okay, well now you don't have that swing tackle anywhere with Chumi Doga out. I mean – if you lose to Marvion Overshown, who's going to fill in there? Like they don't have a lot of depth to this team, so it, they're very top heavy and they need these rookies to step up. But if any of them get hurt, I don't know who's going to fill in for them on the back end. It's gonna it's gonna come down to who's healthy and who's not. Cooper Rush is your man. God, <laughs> the, it's I, I continue to they, come back to the point that they do not have a quarterback on the depth chart with a longer than one year contract right now. Like every single quarterback on their depth chart. Is or a head coach, or, or head coach, <laughs> or defensive coordinator. Right, this is it. Yeah, <laughs> so all in. Uh, Bob, <laughs> certainly I'm all just in. Curious how the Broncos look? Did they anything? Oh, uh, thank pop, you so much for asking. Did anything pop in that game? <laughs> I haven't said the words Bo Nix in 31 minutes now. So um, Bo Nix is going Ooh, to be Jordan five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Did she actually? <laughs> Bo Nix played so well yesterday. If they give Jarrett Stidham any time with the ones throughout the rest of camp, they are fooling themselves. He's going to start week one. He's going to beat the Chiefs. He's going to take us back to the – Beat the uh, Chiefs? He's going to beat the Chiefs. He's going to take us back to the promised land. Bo Nix season, here we come. All right? I love it. I am all in on Bo Nix. I'm trying to come up with nicknames now for Bo Nix because Nix is so good for for nicknames. So I forgot the ones I already said to Jordan last night. But anyway. 
that's, she, all, that's all we had. That's all we had. All right, cool. Well, at least we got that in. Do we <laughs> know? Do we know how Rashad Wisdom played in the? Bucks I actually was. Game? I didn't look. I wanted to go look because Cephas played uh, for the for the Jags too. I wanted to go check both of them out. Yeah, I didn't see their box score, but we had a few San Antonians in that Colts Broncos game, and uh, Jalen Jones had a tackle. Didn't play very long, but you know he started. Looks like he's going to start Josh during Reynolds. the regular year. Josh had one catch for 11 yards, but... He had a bad drop in the back it, of the end zone. It, that was a pretty nice ball, it looked like, that was thrown his way. From Bonix. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, Elijah Garcia from Stevens High School had a really nice boat his back goal line stand tackle for his only dot into the box score. Yeah, they just... the the. Uh... Uh, Broncos just lost a Texas alum too, Caden Stearns. They just yeah. dropped Caden Stearns off. Yeah, so that stinks for him. You think he's done? He might be. He did, well, yeah, I he mean, might be. Well, he might be done for now. I mean, because the he Panthers got cut, picked he got him cut, up and yeah. then they cut him too. He failed his physical. He failed so. his physical. I mean, it sucks, right? I mean, here we yeah, are with a guy with an injury, world. and yep. Well, I mean, hopefully he can come back from the injury. He just doesn't look like he's ready to come back from it right this moment. So yeah, I mean, we're pulling for him, obviously. So to summarize, Bo Nix is the best. All right, so that's all we got for okay, That's all we got. We'll that's all we got. <laughs> that's Tom, all we got for yeah. Tom Guerrero's in the house. Shout, Shout out, out Tom, Tom Guerrero. Guerrero. Shout out Tom Guerrero. <laughs> that's all we got for on the Sneakers Cleats Podcast. Today. Remember, download, rate, review, subscribe. Give us a five-star rating. Tell a friend, tell an enemy. We'll see you on Thursday.